It was the most infamous miss in Kenner's vintage Star Wars line, and you might say their greatest folly. Greater than the yellow lightsaber, greater than the missing Bespin playset, but thanks to Smith Lord Creations, this folly has been redeemed. This is not gonna work. Why didn't you say so before? I did say so before. A few weeks ago, I got a really nice message from Chris Smith of Smith Lord Creations. Now, full disclosure, I'd never heard of Smith Lord Creations before, and I'd never spoken with Chris Smith. And he said that he had just completed work on his latest project, which was vintage Power of the Force Kenner style Han Solo in Stormtrooper disguise. And he wanted to send me a sample. And I said, sure, that sounds really interesting. It wasn't a custom job. It wasn't him cutting the head off of a Stormtrooper or a vintage Last 17 Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper disguise and putting a Han head on it. That's kind of been the way most vintage collectors have completed uh, that gap in the Kenner line for the last 35 years. Uh, and as you know, I'm not wild about taking uh, vintage figures and cutting them up and, and cobbling them back together. That's just, that's just not something that I'm one good at or two. You know, I understand with beater figures, it, it's, it's very, very common. But when it comes down to the last 17, you know, there's a lot fewer of those than there are the rest of the Star Wars line. And so every single Luke Stormtrooper that had its head cut off, you know, for Han Solo's head to be put on there, that's another rare Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper disguise that's been lost uh, so somebody can have a Han in Stormtrooper disguise. And while I get the desire, it wasn't a road I wanted to go down. Uh, then Chris threw uh, another uh, monkey wrench into, into my thinking, he said, oh, and by the way, he said, uh, I've also recreated from the ground up Luke in Stormtrooper disguise in the vintage Kenner style. And I was like, wow, really? Uh, so I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, send them my way. I'd really love to see them. Um, and when he sent me the box, not only did, did he send me a Luke and a Han from his Smith Lord Creations studio, but he also sent me a carded Han in Stormtrooper disguise with the Power of the Force coin that was custom created for the card back. It, I mean, it looks incredible. Uh, so I had to dig into these figures and see what this was all about. Going into this, uh, just to give you a little background for those of you who, who maybe don't know it off the top of your head, Kenner was up until the point in 1985 when they did Power of the Force, they were very good at keeping the trio through each movie completed. Um, in the original run, of course, they had Luke, Han, and Leia as standard, and, and that was pretty much how they were depicted throughout the entire film, minus X-Wing Luke Skywalker, uh, who came out the, the next year in 79. Once they got into Empire and Jedi, sometimes things staggered up a little bit, because for some reason, I guess, they focus grouped it and figured out what they wanted to put out first. Uh, so for example, Bespin Leia came out first and Bespin Luke came out first, but Hoth Han Solo came out with them. And then later on, Hoth Leia came out, then uh, Bespin Han Solo, and then Hoth Luke, which was a little, you know, little backwards and a little bit of a shell game. And then in Return of the Jedi's line, you know, you had Jedi Luke Skywalker and uh, Bounty Hunter Princess Leia come out, but you didn't have uh, Jabba's Palace, a.k.a. Carbonite Han Solo, come out until the Power of the Force line. Similarly, you had Indoor Han and Indoor Leia, but we had to wait for Power of the Force to get Indoor Luke. Um, and you can... Uh, mileage... <laughs> Mileage may vary if the weight was worth it on Indoor Luke. You know my thoughts on that from the last 17 uh, video. But we also received a brand new figure uh, of one of the heroes, and that was Luke in Stormtrooper disguise. And I got to ask Kenner, you know, why was there no Han brought out with that one immediately? It's it's really weird that that they didn't, uh, if they knew this was the last hurrah and they were bringing out a Luke in Stormtrooper disguise, they kind of need to bring out that Han too, you know, and they didn't do it. And so it was the only 
hero uh, in a specific outfit that didn't have the matching pair, that didn't have the counterpart, it didn't have, you know, all the indoors were were uh, represented, all the Hoths, all the Bespins, all the originals, um, all the J- Jabba's Palace, but the Stormtrooper disguise uh, characters were not. And uh, uh, because Han, what a glaring omission. Um, so when Chris told me that he was bringing out this this fully created from the ground up, you know, Smith Lord creations like Vader Trader style with those sand troopers that I reviewed a few months ago. I mean, they're not cobbled from existing vintage. They are built right from the from the new molds all the way up. Uh, I was like, wow, this this is really awesome. Um, so I got them in the studio here and I started looking at them. And one of the first things I noticed was that they do not have uh, recreated uh, COO marks on the back like the vintage Luke Stormtrooper does and the vintage Stormtrooper. So immediately there is a way to tell that these are not uh, authentic vintage. They don't have a date stamp, which is which is nice. Um, the Luke and Stormtrooper and the Han are both constructed exactly as Kenner constructed the original Luke Stormtrooper figure. That means that you have four points of articulation, not five, because Luke's head actually didn't move uh, on Luke Stormtrooper because they constructed him in a way similar to the vintage Stormtrooper itself where the head didn't move. Now, Chris also recreated every detail of the Luke Stormtrooper body almost to the micron. That includes the, uh, the blaster hand, which was a little funkier from the standard Stormtrooper blaster hand. You really had to torque that blaster in at a funky angle um, to get that uh, to get the thumb to grip it properly on the vintage Luke Stormtrooper, and these are no different. I mean, the hand is exactly the same way. The helmets are done exactly the same way, and that is good for the Luke figure uh, because that Luke figure, as I talked about in the last seventeen, he had a very very disproportionately tiny head. And that was so his head would fit in the helmet accessory. Han Solo, on the other hand, uh, his helmet is the Luke helmet. I mean, it is exactly the Luke helmet. Uh, that means that his his nose doesn't quite fit in there because his head is molded off the original small head Han Solo, which was not uh, engineered to ever have a uh, that that particular helmet over it. Now. The funny thing to me, kind of made me chuckle, is that he's using small head Han Solo, which is the way to go because it's a lot more um, visually appealing than, you know, Gargantian Noggin Han Solo. But if they had actually made a Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise at Kenner, they would have had to have made his head even smaller, which I can't even picture. Or they would have had to have custom engineered a separate helmet accessory for Han that I guess gave more room in the face. Uh, more than likely, they probably would have sculpted a, a different head. Um, but for my purposes, with the with the continuity of the original 78 Kenner figure run, it's nice to have the vintage small head Han Solo represented on the Stormtrooper body, which is really cool. Quality of the plastic, top notch. Uh, the joints, very nice and tight. Uh, it really feels like a brand new Kenner figure uh, when you're, when you're looking, uh, when you're, when you're fiddling with them. As far as display, that's where you have to make a compromise because, uh, the Luke figures helmet works just like the original. You put it on 90 degrees to his nose and then you, you turn it so that it can face forward. The Han Solo figure, the helmet does go on. However, because of the lack of, uh, room for his nose, it really only gets once you put it on 90 degrees, you can really only get it to the point where it looks like he's kind of looking at a three-quarter angle, which actually helps vary up the helmeted display nicely. Uh, it, it doesn't look bad on display with the helmets on, provided you are okay with his helmet, you know, sitting at that angle uh, so that he's sort of turned on display. I like it myself because it, it adds some variety. Um, it, it It would be nice to see if there was a way to um, you know, maybe uh, shave the interior of the helmet a little bit and, and get it to, to sit properly, but I'm, I'm not willing to, uh, to risk it uh, at, this, at this point. You know, maybe down the line if I, if I can get a, a Dremel attachment and try it out, but 
I'm afraid that the Dremel will just go right through the face of the helmet, which would be a real shame. Uh, the Luke figure, thankfully, uh, he looks close to the vintage Kenner, but there's enough differences in the face uh, that you're not going to mistake it for an original vintage Kenner from, from where I'm standing. I think they actually look distinctly different, which was a nice thing to do. Now, a lot of people are going to cry foul. They're going to say, oh, this is repro, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I, I, I read an, uh, a comment several years ago uh, on a staunchly anti-repro uh, collector's group page where they said they were okay with customs because customs couldn't be passed off as originals. And I was like, okay, so you're okay with you know, the disproportionate number of Luke stormtroopers getting their heads cut off to make Han stormtroopers. Um, but you're not okay with someone trying to create, you know, more Luke stormtroopers, you know, to satisfy the demand. Um, I, you know, my, you know, my view on repros, um, I don't, I don't worry about them. I don't have them on my actual vintage figures, but I also really love things like this, things like Vader Trader. I love the effort that goes into this stuff. I really love the artistry that goes into it, the passion. This stuff right here, that this Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise with this amazing card back, I mean, to me, that's better than anything Hasbro's about to do with the repro, uh, the, the repro. I call it the repro collection, uh, but the, re the retro collection that, that, that's coming out. This, to me, I'd collect this all day because like I said, the fans are doing the best work right now when it comes to Star Wars. Hands down, no question, um, the fans are doing the best work. And I'm going to be really proud to display this, this uh, Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise right alongside my original Last 17 uh, authentic Luke Skywalker and Stormtrooper disguise. I don't have a problem doing that. And I can't wait to put them in my vintage Death Star uh, on display so that they can be next to Chewbacca together. Because I didn't do that with the original Last 17 Luke at first because I didn't have Han. And I wasn't about to chop off a Luke's head to do it. So uh, this is really exciting. And, and the quality, top notch. So if you're looking for uh, or have ever wanted a, a vintage uh, uh, Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise, or for that matter, a quality uh, stand-in for a Kenner Luke and Stormtrooper disguise. Uh, check out the uh, check out the description the the description of the video below. That'll show you the links to um, Smith Lord Creations and uh, uh, get you on your way to uh, completing this this legendary duo um, from the original Star Wars film. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm gonna sign off because uh, boring conversation anyway. Luke, we're gonna have company.